It is the Frank and Friends Show. Hi, I'm Frank Murphy. I'm Jeff Detrow. I'm so glad to have you back. Thanks for coming. I'm so surprised to be back. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're peacefully retired. What are you doing? Uh, slumming on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not. That was not meant to be. I know. Like, yes, I deliberately. Def- I, you know me. I just back for the figs. Yeah. Oh, well, I do have a tray of uh, figs that were freshly picked. And if you want to eat some, I mean, um, they're delicious. In fact, I'm going to. You know what? This one, I'll eat this one because you know why the hole is, is gigantic? is because I kicked a bumblebee out of it. He was eating this one, which means it's going to be particularly sweet, I think. Mm. Oh, I hope he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Mm. I really do. <laughs> well, <laughs> look at this. And I think any of our um, any of our Spanish listeners... Higos. ...will know that you have a big Higo problem. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Frank... Has such a giant ego problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. I do love a good chuckle. I'm, I'm out of, that's it, though. I'm out of stuff now. After I, that. Uh, so. Yes. Um, I, I, there's a, you can buy Spanish figs covered in chocolate. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, Choco Higos. And, oh, they're so good. I, but I guess it's ego. You don't say the H. I say the H. But mm-hmm. uh, e- ah, ego. Yes, I do have. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. That'll be the title of this episode: ego problem. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. Uh, do, we do thank you, of course, for uh, telling your friends about the Frank and Friends show, so that we can get to oh, by Christmas by time. Christmas, one thousand by Christmas. That's the goal, and that's with your help. So uh, you do that by, by subscribing. If you're only watching for the first time, hit that subscribe button, ring the button, ring the bell for notifications, and um, tell your friends about it. Get us the more subscribers, because I love the way you're thinking about that. The goal. Yeah. It's a goal. It is a goal. And I'm, I'm trying, you know, uh, obviously, before you came over today, I went outside and picked all of these, um, because there's just so many figs on the tree. And it's gotten to the point where uh, my wife, who works at a school, it's inopportune, really, the te- for the figs to ripen on the first day of school. You know, for the figs to be busy when, when she's um, helping arrange the schedule. She's the front office manager, but she also helps plan the, whatever, the, the master calendar for the, so they know which room, which class happens in which room, and uh-huh. which teacher goes where, and which student goes where. She's able, she's smart enough to figure that four-dimensional chess. She's able to, to do all of that. You know, so, but so the figs are just ripening and I'm bringing in buckets of figs, you know, 60, 70, 80 figs a day to the point where like I, we can't cook them. You know, we were cranking out last year for whatever, however it worked out last year. I think they ripened a little later in the year, a little late because we had some that we were still ripening in October, September. We're going through all these. Uh, we'd bring them in and we just you start boil, mash them, boil them, um, can them, get them, you know, add the sugar, make the preserves. Crank them out, crank them out. We were making fig bread. Uh, we're looking for new recipes of things to make. Well, this year, my wife is doing a little research. And Kristen, would you help me for a second? I need, I need to, if you don't mind, to head over there. Um, we don't have time to process all the figs. So I have, we have found a way to procrastinate. A new way to procrastinate this year. Wow. And involving figs? Involving figs. Hmm. In fact, here, um, I'll show you. Thank you very much. Here's a bag. Of, these are these little purple ones that I think are so sweet and so delicious and I don't know why one of my tree has decided to evolve and, uh, and do purple figs whereas the other one is doing browns. I, I can't figure it out. Wouldn't you think it'd be soil related? Like, um... I mean, the one is literally a clone of the other. You know, it's, it could be and they're, and they're just on either side of the driveway so maybe mm-hmm. maybe I've got some kind of gas leak. <laughs> <laughs> some kind of fuel yeah. spill. But uh, see, these are frozen. <clears throat> And they're rock solid. Yeah. They're, um, so we've been laying them out on a cookie sheet until they turn into like ping pong balls or marbles or whatever. I mean, they're, they're pretty, you know, you squeeze one, you can see they're, yeah. they're, they're frozen solid. I have solid. bags just like this of, in our freezer at home. Of? Well, they're dog meat balls. <laughs> but I mean, not, not, that's not a euphemism they're like not, lamb fries. They're not made from dogs. No, no, they're special meatballs for the dogs, and I and I make Thank them you. in a. I make them in the whole sink. I make fill the whole sink and make yeah hundreds so of you them. Get it. And, and there's like twenty ingredients. How many dogs do you have? Uh, well, we have two, uh-huh. but 
uh, when you're making dog meatballs, why not? Why don't you call them meatballs for dogs? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> when you think about it. <laughs> I mean, you could put some Korean yeah. flavoring in them just to really confuse people. <laughs> put a little kimchi in there. <laughs> but, uh, oh, so, man. so you've got these, you've got just bags in the freezer, just the freezer's full. Yeah, bags full of dog meatballs. So I have still have uh, frozen fig bread from last year. Obviously, we still have canned fig jam from last year. Fig, um, Fig preserves. Um, but now we've got all of these, so I'm trying to think, what are we going to do? Because what I've actually done is managed to kick the can down the road to maybe when we do Christmas baking. You know? Mm-hmm. Because then, then we can bring out the... Procrastination. Yes. We, I don't know. My wife doesn't want to make figgy pudding. I don't even know what it is. I mean, she just Somebody knows, will bring you some. She knows that she didn't like... Her dad used to make bread pudding or something at Christmas time, and she didn't like it. So, mm-hmm. all right, whatever. So she doesn't want figgy pudding. She says it's too much like fruitcake. Uh, but the, the fig bread that we make isn't that much unlike fruitcake. It's more like a banana bread or a zucchini bread, but sweet. You know, so we've got those. We've got all these things. Um, and this is a way I think we can make fig smoothies. I think we could get out the, uh-huh. the, the what do you call it, blender, the fancy blender. It could be blender. the new acai. Yes. We just need to uh, expound on and kind of exaggerate the, uh, the, yeah. the health benefits. Well, it it's a la- has a laxative effect. It's uh, very. Oh, 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 thanks for telling me now. <laughs> <laughs> you, well, you need, you need me to what's pause. The, what's the transitory time? <laughs> Do you know? Like, well, I think it depends on on your system. Uh, for me, it's slow because <laughs> uh, we were out over the over the past weekend, and we you know went to Aubrey's, and they had prime rib as the special, and it was so good. But I definitely um, overate the prime rib, and I'm feeling it. And I'm thinking, well, I got the, I got to start popping the figs, you know. Um, and well, for me, I. <sighs> Do you know the term transitory time? I understand exactly what you're saying. You, you know what? After you get done telling well, that, I'll tell you how I know that. Does it have to do with soup prep? No. Okay, well, I'll ask no. you about that too. But I, I know that when I eat a lot of cheese or red meat, it it's um, it, I don't know how to. It's gross, but it slows things down to a crawl. You know, so really the best time of year for me to eat cheese and red meat is during fig season. <laughs> because at least I've got something to neutralize. One neutralizes Man. the other. Like if I eat too much cheese, I'm, I'm done. I'm in trouble. But I got to, you know, so that's why I need more figs in my life. So this is good. I can, I can thaw these and just eat them year round now instead of, yeah, just all at, all at once. Uh-huh. So transit. <laughs> Who so, would have ever thought that? So tell me what the transitory. Well, the reason I know that term is because I uh, had to research it, because um, I had all of my teeth, like all of them, redone. Yeah. Oh, quite a long time ago, because yeah. I had headaches every day yeah. since high school through adult. Yeah. And it was my bite that was gooped up. So they put. Oh, at, nice. Uh, all right. Doctor Chan. This is in San Diego. Well, San Diego, and then he moved to Las Vegas, and I flew out there because he's. You have a Las Vegas dentist. Viva Las Dentist. That's. (laughs) Viva. And now check it out. Not only. Does he work for the mob? (laughs) <laughs> I will connected. change your yeah because he can change your identity he can he can change your, your dental records he is one of three Dr. Chans that I had <laughs> and then when we moved to Sacramento I had Dr. Chen three Chans and a Chen okay we'll return to <laughs> three Chans and a Chen I feel um, like Johnny Carson setting up one of those bits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Three Chans. Okay, so... So Dr. Chan fixed your teeth. Yes, and so every every tooth is essentially um, a full crown. Uh, every one. Okay. And uh, that, But I have a very, very strong bite, and I, and I frequently... Your bark's life, not too bad either, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and I frequently in life, because of my massive mandibular joint blow my crowns off and they'll come off and then (laughs) all kinds of things have happened i don't remember who it was but i was interviewing somebody uh like somebody big yeah one of the bigger interviews i've ever gotten to do and one of my teeth shot out and and so from across the (laughs) desk 
the person I was interviewing, all of a sudden there was nobody there because I was on the floor looking for my tooth. And I'm crawling around and I found it, stuck it back in because you can kind of wedge them back in. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, more than a few times I have swallowed um, a, crown? a crown. And they're $1,500. So. You, you, don't know just, you just don't write them off. You need and, to measure the transitory time. Yes, you need to know when to start looking. <laughs> <laughs> and just so you know, I'm at about 18 hours. So do which you, is a pretty good turnaround, if you know what I mean. <laughs> are you expecting a crown delivery soon? Is that why the figs are going to mess up the transitory time? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but next time I... <laughs> swallow one if we have a, uh, an important event coming up oh, fig up. and I need to you know hasten it fig up then I can come yeah fig up yeah fig up America <laughs> fig up well see I I am one of the few people who enjoyed the soup prep experience during um, you know prep for a, yeah. a colonoscopy I thought, oh I honey it was I a relief it. it was like it was like finally blessed relief it was I, I thought yeah I wish they sold that stuff over the counter I might just drink it <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, prime rib. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I know it's just it's it's health, you know. It's what it's what old when you get a couple of old guys around. What are you going to talk about? You're going to talk about transitory time. I'm glad that you have a big vocabulary, though, because otherwise we'd be. You know, my friend Bean said he didn't like the talk about uh, poo on a previous episode with you when I was talking uh -huh. about Jerry the Brave. He said that was too much. But now, Bean, we've done it all using big New York Times crossword puzzle words. We've already had acai on the uh -huh. show. That's uh -huh. in the puzzle all the time, mm -hmm. right? You know what's in the crossword puzzle all the time? And I don't even know who he is, but yeah. I know he's a musician. But I, Brian Eno? Always. Always yeah. Brian Eno. There's well, like not a puzzle that Brian Eno isn't in. I worked at a record store in 1982 when I, when I was still in college. And we sold a lot of, Brian Eno was a thing in that store. You know, it was kind of a cutting edge. We sold, you know, uh, a lot of alternative, early alternative music. Uh -huh. And I remember people bought Brian Eno records, but I, I mean, I couldn't tell you anything he does other than that. I just know that put him in the crossword automatically. Yeah. 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 yeah so do you yeah. do, do you do it on paper or do you do it on the app? On my phone. Oh, me too. I really like that. I like doing it on the iPad now because it makes it so it just, I, I can do it on the phone. I can do the Monday on the phone because each day of the week they get progressively harder. Like uh, yesterday for the Monday, um, whenever, well, this past week, whenever that was, because you do, it messes you up because you actually do them the night before. I, well, as soon as they come right, out, right. like 10 p.m., yes. I'm on there, and, I'm, <laughs> and I do it at night when I'm more alert. My wife does it in the morning when she's more alert. I'm right there with you. I wait for release yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. But I, well, we already discussed release time <laughs> that I was waiting for. <laughs> the uh, that that's, <laughs> that's the NYT transitory yes, time. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll be on there, and I, I knocked out um, a Monday recently in uh, four and a half minutes. Which what? I think is my best time, maybe. What? Yeah. Well, no one's ever done that. Oh, of course people do that. The no, people, maybe the no, people on... The um, experts who write the blogs about crossword puzzles, that to them, they're, they're, everything's always, oh, this is too easy. I did it in three minutes. And I think they're lying. Um, because three minutes is... Like, even, they say they can do a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in three minutes. I don't believe them. But well, there's well, some... The, 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 no, the women on... Uh, on uh, Hidden Figures, yeah. maybe could do it that time. And the guy that Russell Crowe played. Well, no, no. I, I mean, I, I like to, I race the clock. Uh, that's part of the fun for me, is doing it as fast as so possible. So how fast do you do? Well, here, like, see, four minutes, 31 seconds. Whoa. That's, but that's a Monday. Did you See, do, like the Sunday, the Sunday is much harder. That took 39 minutes, 48 seconds. All right, let me look and see how long Sunday took oh, All of a sudden, week. now we're at a pee contest. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday, oh gosh, an hour and 52. Okay, but you enjoyed uh, it. Saturday was 46 minutes. Saturday was pretty good. What did okay. you do for Saturday? 20 in? minutes. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not humiliated about the stories about my teeth and my you-know-what, but this is too much because you have insulted my ego. <laughs> You know what we should do is we should put some salt on your ego. Wow, <laughs> Frank. We literally assault the ego. Wow. I like crossword puzzles. My grandpa used to do them, and I 
just got in. But see, I also, uh, here's, I've got a problem. I can't just grow figs for fun. I have to overdo it. I frank it to 11. Everything uh -huh. I do, uh -huh. I overdo. Yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a flaw. It's a personality flaw. But, like, I started thinking about, well, how do you do crossword puzzles? What's the trick to it? And everything, and I, you know, I can't just enjoy things. I have to know how does it work? How, what yeah, do they do? But, but that kind of time goes beyond knowing the conventions. Oh, no, you no, know, it's, it, it's it, all about knowing. Something, the, and the reason that your processing is so fast for improv. Oh, yeah, I love doing improv. Uh -huh. And that, you're right. So they certainly go hand in hand. And my wife used to get frustrated because, like, the same thing. She'd get mad at me. I, I'm not allowed. She won't, I hope she doesn't watch this episode because I don't tell my wife my times. Now, she knows that on the mini, you can actually, um, like, compare. There's a, a leaderboard, so you can find some friends who do the puzzle, and you can compare times on the mini. But that pisses my wife off, too, because I'll do the mini in literally half the time it takes her. And she's all, like, here. You see, so that's me, and that's her, you know. Ooh. And so she's always like, oh, man, you did the mini in sometimes 20 seconds, 18 seconds. I've done it in 18 seconds. Because sometimes it's so easy. Are you, like, balancing your checkbook right now while no. telling jokes? <laughs> no, my wife does that. <laughs> but what I've told her... But you I, could. But I've taught her some of these crossword puzzle tricks. So her time... She's cut her time down dramatically because I've said, well, first of all, if you really want to go fast, you do the downs, generally speaking, not always, you do the downs before the acrosses if you're in a race, if you're in an absolute race. Oh. You do the downs first. Oh. Because the downs, they, they usually, most people write the puzzle so that the, clever, the crosses are clever. And then the downs, you just got to put in whatever, whatever works. So you end up with Brian Eno. You end up with Ado, A-D-O. You end up with all these other common crossword fill, they call it. Common fill that they, turns up in puzzles frequently because they've got the right vowels and consonants that are common. And you know? when you do them, do you sometimes stop halfway through and think, Man, this one's. Who wrote this one? This oh, one's yeah. really good. Yeah, and, and and not just Will Shorts, but the people who actually. Oh, to write savor them. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's a few that I mean, and sometimes now when you do some mention improv, I will admit that sometimes when the long answers, the theme answers, yeah. are all puns or jokes, I love those because sometimes I can actually just fill those in. Yeah. Just because I know I get the joke, I see the construction <laughs> yeah. of the joke, so it looks insane because I'm doing the opposite of what everyone else does. I'm filling in the hardest answers first <laughs> because I understand comedy. <laughs> That's what you've done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, all right. I get. I see the joke here, or I see what they're doing here. It's got to be. Oh, it's it's all going to be foreign capitals. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Let me put in Cairo. <laughs> that was this week. Yes. Uh, I'll put that in, and then the rest of it we'll figure out the rest. So anyway, but um, you're right. It does help me with improv, and improv helps me with this. And frankly, I think improv helps me with everything. Um, I'm going to put in a plug for my friend Aaron Campbell and the Secret City Improv Fest, or festival. When some, when sometimes it's a fest, sometimes it's a festival. I think it's Secret City Improv Festival. This is his second year of doing it. Um, and we managed to have a successful one last year, uh, even though it was, you know, weird and doing a show in September, October. The Historic Grove Theater in Oak Ridge is huge, so there's plenty of room oh. for everyone to spread out. This year, you know, it'll be much more relaxed. Uh, they're bringing in 18 professional troops from all over the country. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there's troops coming from Chicago, wow. Chicago, Los Angeles, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Of course, the group I'm in, Einstein Simplified, from Knoxville, Tennessee, will be in. We're Im big fans. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's Improv always a good show. And we went to, uh, Chris and I went to an improv show up in Seattle. Nice. Uh, at a festival, and we had so much fun. I mean, it's, it's a fun event. Yeah, it's mind-blowing when you see the, the way Einstein does it, it's just one small slice of the improv pie. You know, we do the Whose Line Is It Anyway style, because our troupe started in 1994 when Whose Line was, you know, very popular and well-known. Um, and we, that, that we love it. That's what we like to do, is that kind of rat-a-tat-tat, fast-paced, uh, short-form improv. <laughs> you but do so well, yeah. You get these other troops who are coming in from other places, uh, Nashville, Chattanooga, um, Greenville, Tusculum College, the Blue Plate special guys are coming in again. Uh, some of those other troops do uh, long-form, which is a different style. It's more theatrical, and it's not, they're not, game, aim isn't necessarily to be 
uh, rat-a-tat joke funny, but it's not, it can be funny, it can be serious, it can be either or, but they're basically trying to do a play, create a play, a beginning and a middle of an end with multiple scenes. And sometimes, it, so it's, you have to, it's the best way to experience it or to understand it is to just experience it a few times because it's hard to explain because you, you know, there's time jumps and there's character jumps, there's all this weirdness happening, but when you see it in real life, yeah, you get it. Oh, um, that sounds great. I, it is great. I mean, uh, we don't really have the budget unless you can... Is there any kind of way you could get a discount of any kind? Exactly, or? there is. The tickets oh, are not oh, that oh. not that expensive. I'm but kidding. if you use my name, uh, the, this, the word Frank, you can get 25% off at secretcityimprovfestival.com slash tickets. How about that? I uh, know. Um, and it's fairly affordable anyway. I mean, you can get a... I think a one-day pass is 20 bucks, and a weekend pass is like 30 for both days. It's um, That's well spent. And they'll have... Uh, Paul Simmons from Einstein Simplified and the guy from Improv Chattanooga and a few others will be teaching low-cost improv workshops during the day on oh, Saturday, wow. October 1st. So you can take an improv class with no... It's a one-off thing, so you're not signing up for weeks of it. It's like usually in the $15 to $25 range. Mm -hmm. You know, something you can just go in and either experience it and either like it or not and either buy the book that they suggest or do, Google the article that they suggest or not. You know, take it or leave it. Paul would be a great instructor. He I is. love that. He is. And if you mention... Yeah, type the word Frank uh -huh. as your discount code, 25% off yeah. on Secret City Improv now, Don't Festival get confused tickets. if you put in Brian Eno. No, that's be bad. I'm not going to get you anything. Wow, that's great. Yeah. We'll go to that. Good. Well, another uh, crossword puzzle word that comes to mind is Air and Aaron. <clears throat> Because for Ireland, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, my wife and I went to the Irish Fest on the Hill, which is uh, it was downtown Knoxville on um, August thirteenth, I think, and it was nice. They had it wasn't burning hot this year, because in past years it's been I think literally not not feels like temperature, but actual temperature was like ninety five, and everyone is just dying. <laughs> just oh. nobody wants to eat a shepherd's pie in that kind of heat. You know? <laughs> no, that <laughs> you're just like. Uh. So we get there though, but it was the day after we'd gone out for the prime rib, and I'm looking around saying, I could I could get a shepherd pie, and no one else wants it. <laughs> Everyone's was like, no, no, we're not getting any shepherd's pie. I'm like, well, they have they have Reuben sandwiches with corned beef. No, we're not getting that. They have corned beef and cabbage. No, we're not getting that. <laughs> so we went to Irish Fest. We just walked around, basically. Um, saw a bunch of people we knew. And had, it was an okay time, but we, we didn't end up staying as long as I thought we were going to stay because um, our house guests wanted to get some dinner, but not red meat. You know, none of the, we had enough. We had to get something else. Well, thankfully... This lady um, who we knew, Ida, she comes walking in. We know her from church out in West Knoxville. She moved downtown. They, they sold her house at the peak of the real estate market, bought a condo downtown across from Balter Beer Works, and now she and her husband walk out around Knoxville all, every day, and they go to all these restaurants. And I said, oh, can you name one? Well, 30 restaurants later, yeah. she's named, she's telling me all these different ones and all where they go for ice cream and where they go for sushi, where they go for tamales, where they go for hot dogs, where they go for chicken, where they go for, you know, pick a thing. And I'm thinking, and they start telling me that I could probably get these folks to go to like the Jig and Reel where I could still get a shepherd's pie, but there's other things on the menu that wouldn't be as heavy that the rest of them could get. So we're going to walk now. No, it's a big, you have to walk, first of all, up, when they say Irish Fest on the hill. It's on the hill. It's on Summit Hill, and we, we took the highest peak possible. The, the, we, of all the ways to go, we parked at the bottom of Gay Street, and we're like hiking up the hill, and halfway up, I'm telling the others, saying, if I don't make it, just you keep going. <laughs> just, it's like Mount Everest, I'll just die here on the yeah. side of the mountain, and you just leave my body. That's, you know, that's, like a, that's what you do when you're climbing mountains. So, um, you know, but we're fine. So anyway, then we're coming back down, we go to the old city. And we go to the jig and reel, and you know, I guess they, I, they still didn't seem that into it. So I'm trying to remember, what are the other places that Ida suggested? Because we used to perform improv at that same intersection. The jig and reel was Manhattan's, where 20 years ago I started doing improv. Across the street, the Lonesome Dove was Patrick Sullivan's, where I continued doing improv probably for 10 more years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I used to know that neighborhood like the back of my hand, but it's all gentrified now. It's all new things, and the you know Big Don's costume shop has been torn down and replaced with a beautiful apartment tower with this spanking new restaurant on the ground floor, or new to me. And it's, I'm thinking there's somewhere else that Ida suggested. Where was it? It's over by the, where they have a glass blowing place um, where you can get a beer, a beer glass made to your hand, made to fit your hand. 
That's fun. I am terrified of it. Cause, like I mean, the wax hands at the zoo. Okay, because I assume they put the molten glass in your hand. That, no, yeah. no, no. Your See, way, that, your yeah. way makes so much more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure they've got that figured out. You yeah, think okay. a couple of people, and you go, "We got to come up with a different way of doing this." I lost my hand. <laughs> it's not a Nicholas Cage. I lost my hand. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, all these fancy places, and I get down there, and there's this fancy looking restaurant called Southern Grit. Oh, I love. Have it. Have you been there? Oh. The, it, it, it it's the best of southern food in um That's i don't right. know maybe in a contemporary take on it mm -hmm. but the biscuits biscuits just are good the biscuits are yeah. good yeah so I always, they have chicken and waffles but they do that mostly with chicken strips and i wanted on the bone chicken um which he said well yeah we can make that if you want but you know you might be probably better off getting the regular chicken with two sides the chicken and waffles he's telling me it comes with those sides I'm like Thanks for the tip. So I got those Brussels sprouts. You know how I love those Brussels sprouts that they just, I don't know what they do. They burn them or something. They char them. Mm -hmm. um, and I got the fried chicken, the breast and the wing. And it was so good. And I got the medium, which is, um, was pretty hot. Yeah. You know, imagine if I got Nashville hot. I think I probably would have just, you know. Um, but the, the waiter says to me, oh, don't worry. I've got emergency milk. I'm like, that makes total sense to me. But but does milk? There's oh, a absolutely. debate as whether milk cools uh, your tongue. Does that? Yeah. I will say yes because I have judged a few chili contests, and they always have milk for the judges, you know, saltines and milk. Mm -hmm. And um, I found it helpful. And even at home, you know, if I eat something too spicy, I go to the milk. Uh huh. Uh, and I I find it works for me. You yeah. know, kind of coats the tongue and does all the things. I think whole milk is easier than better. Works better than skim milk. I don't know. Maybe I think maybe it's the fat in there just kind of gives mm -hmm. you this, this this buffer. Well, um, when we get into we, before we even sat down, there's no line, right? You walk up to the walk inside. I'm like, this is great. We're going to get a table right away. And he says, 45 minutes. Uh, what do you mean 45 minutes? Because like, you forget. Like, well, what's your phone number? Where you know you have to. Leave. We're going to call you. And like I said, okay. Well, where where, where can we hang out? He's like, well, you can't. We don't have any chairs. <laughs> yeah, well. You have to go take a walk. Yeah. So, they, so they literally said to me, well, you, uh, you, most people, you, you go take a walk and we'll call you when your table's ready. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah at small restaurants, it, it, it's really obtrusive when they see yeah. the people right there with you because you can see them going like, you know, like your dog when you're yes. eating a yes. burger, your dog stares at you. Yes. Yeah. So... Well, so we, we took a walk. My brother-in-law, Joe, and I, we went. We looked at the pretentious glass. We walked around and, you know, just hiked the old city. And my wife and Peggy were looking at the shops the other direction. And then she has to call me and say, in fact, we were in there so absorbed with the glass blowing that I got the call say, hurry up, the table's ready. So everything was great at that restaurant. Next day, we're, they're leaving, but we're going to go to brunch at um, a well-known brunchery near in town. Oh, I can say it. It's First Watch. We love going to First Watch. We go to... Supermarket, buy the gift cards, you know, get oh. get the gas points. But they're a place where um, even if you get on the app, my wife, it, this is this is what's at the end of church and mass has ended. As soon as the priest says, or as soon as the last prayer, you know, Saint Michael the Archangel, whatever. As soon, yeah. as, soon as the priest, because we all we know the priest, right? So as soon as he's past us and can't see us anymore, my wife has got the phone. And she's doing it under the <laughs> yeah, song sheet. Yeah, yes. And she's signing us in to first watch. <laughs> we do that with Cracker Barrel. <laughs> we do. I get on the on the wait list. And yeah. It, uh, like, I, 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 oh, yeah. And also with you. Right. <laughs> hold on a second here. <laughs> lift, it, lift up. Yeah. Yeah. Lift up your heart. I, yeah. Hold on here. I'll be right with you. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife Scott is on the list. We get over there. And still, there's just, you know, a ton of people sitting on the stairs, sitting on the sidewalk, sitting on the few on the little bench they have inside sure. so there's this mob and you feel bad because a little bad walking past some of the people who may have physically gotten there five minutes before you but we electronically got there yes. five minutes before them mm -hmm. so we make it through and then the tables are pretty close together which is fun but um we all, I decided I was going to order something different. The, everyone in the family, we all tried something new, something we hadn't ordered before. So it was exciting for us. You know, I got the elevated egg sandwich, which normally I get like the bowl with the potatoes or I get the frittata or the 
mar morning market veg omelet. I, I always get the same things at a lot of these places. Well, this time I get the elevated egg sandwich because they can make it with scrambled eggs and it's going to be delicious. And I'm going to get, instead of the greens, I'm going to get the fruit bowl. I'm going to be, oh, I'm going to be all ready to go. Well, we're sitting, everyone's got their stuff. And the lady who is sitting as close as you and I are at the next table, um, I just, I explained to her, I said, we all got the elevated egg sandwich and I got mine with scrambled, but she got the Benedict and he got the uh, over easy and she got the, with, with the fries or whatever, not the fries, but the hash browns, whatever, the potatoes, mm -hmm. you know. And my wife is looking at me like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you talking to the lady at the next table? And she was, so then when they finally left, um, which they were finishing up and they had waffles um, and they were older ladies. They were sweet older ladies, you know, probably, I mean, not to throw them under the bus, but they were probably late seventies, you know, like mm -hmm. oh, they're very lovely. A couple of kids. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. As far as I'm concerned. Right. So, um, my wife says to me, what, what were you doing? Why did you start talking to that lady? Did she ask you what were you ordering? I said, well, she did with her eyes. Because <laughs> oh. she had this look. I, mean, I, I, I know you. I mean, she's. I, we're, we all I, get her food. <laughs> so I'm. I'm her. You're. You're me. I'm her. Yeah. And she's eating their way. And all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> and I thought, break the ice. Sure. Just tell her what we got. I think that was um, that was vulnerable <laughs> and kind and giving of you because you could have just. <laughs> ignored it but you knew that she I was could, yeah because i was also yeah. curious i'm always i want to know what other people get uh -huh. and that actually started the conversation with brother-in-law joe he says his dad when he got to be 80 or 90 would just you know, at that point you don't care about anything he would walk around the restaurant stopping at other people's tables asking them what they got so that he could help decide you know, what he was going to order you know i it does kill me at a place where you wait like for pizza. Yeah. And then other people get up and leave and there's like three pristine slices right there. It ah. seems like that should be fair. Oh, to just eat the leftovers? Well, it's they right They should there. take it with them. They should take it. Uh, but a lot of times people to don't. Go. And there's like two slices right there. And it's it's kind of like, why not? Why wouldn't I? Well, I know the pizza place near your house is, it's great. Jaboni's? Jaboni's is I good. mean, I, Jerry and I drove, all, we were just wanted pizza, and we drove all the way down to Maryville just to go to Jaboni's. Yeah. Because the guy who owns it, um, and I have been Facebook friends since before he owned it. Mm -hmm. So he's always posting pictures about how, um, you know, how proud he is of his staff at Jaboni's. I'm like, we got to go try this. He's doing such a good job. It's and uh, the, Bart Fritz, by the way. And the staff is so happy with their new owner. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, I did the same thing. There's another guy who I knew from Downtown Grill and Brewery and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society fundraisers, uh, Dan Goss. He left his longtime job downtown and opened up his own place in uh, West Knoxville. It's called Point B. And maybe on another episode I can do this, but I, or I guess I can, I can pull it out. Uh, I went there for my birthday dinner with Artie Rocket because they have like charcuterie boards, which is not what I was into. We had regular food, but uh, in fact, I think I got roast chicken, if I remember correctly, uh, and mashed potatoes. But we had the uh, charcuterie board of s'mores, the s'mores board oh. at the end. Oh, oh. How old is your grandson? He's eight. <laughs> so I'll have to I'll have to show that you. That was. I may have I may have some photos. I can certainly put it on the screen because I know where I know I've got them. This is the best night ever. Oh man, yeah, we're up there, uh, just you know, s'mores and out, uh, having a, a grand old time. We got a text, um, Artie, because I was at uh, Kroger the other day, and there's a new development that he needs to know about. Mm -hmm. Marshmallows with injected in the middle uh, Hershey chocolate. Yes, those are, oh my goodness, this is fantastic. Why, I mean, like, why didn't we think of that a long time ago? This makes it easier to make the s'mores. Like, like, why didn't we think of, hey, these suitcases, why don't we put wheels on the bottom? You know, or coolers. These are smart why, things, why, yeah. But why didn't we think, like, why the didn't they think to put, like, when they were <laughs> lugging those coolers around, well, the, the wheel was invented already. you got to admit that our parents' generation, they were the greatest generation. They were more industrious, not as lazy as we are. True that. Yeah, so they like... Yeah, true that. <laughs> they're like, oh, you, la it. you lazy people with your wheels yeah. and your chocolate-stuffed marshmallows. Yeah. <laughs> but that I do need to go out, after we're done with the show, I do have to go out and buy s'mores supplies. 
because I'm going, as I think I told your wife, uh, in the next day or two, going glamping with the twins. Uh-huh. Um, and I want to have uh, butter burgers and butter buttered buns, you know, bison burgers on buttered buns. Yeah. And then, like, gourmet s'mores. So what I'll do is I'll get some marshmallow peeps, which roast beautifully, because the, the outside caramelizes, you get a brulee effect. Uh-huh. Uh, and then you put that with the chart with probably some, you know. That's the thing they had at this point B, is instead of regular chocolates they had candy bars they had like a, a milky way and a snickers and uh, uh, other different types of chocolate bars to make the s'mores that and even the ghirardelli squares and i'm thinking that's that's gourmet s'more making right there and you get a uh your own sterno right a little fire yeah, here sure. and you get the sticks and you roast your marshmallow at your table um and then you know put your, assemble your own s'more I thought it was great. Oh, that is that's um, that's charcuterie for an eight-year-old. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing yeah. better. Oh, it was big time. It was a huge success. So I'd, I'd go back there uh, in a minute. But yeah. it was uh, apparently. Uh, I'll point this out. If you're a single man, you might want to go to point B because the night we were there, it was all women. And it was like just jammed. You couldn't get oh, the whole bar was just gir- all women. I don't know if it was a girls' night out or ladies' night. I don't know what was going on. But there was hardly a dude in the place. Did any? <laughs> Unless wow. maybe I misunderstood. <laughs> Unless maybe I was the one out of place, and I wouldn't. I wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> you know, I have a um, a thought that goes back to your forty uh, second crossword puzzles and yeah. the way your mind works, and and you and you said you know that's my there, there was, you said something was a fault or something and 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 I think as you uh, get older you learn to thank god for the way he made you yeah. as opposed to feeling guilty for the that's, way you are that's a very good point you know i at least have relaxed into thanking him for the good things you oh, know yeah. and instead of beating me up but um with your 40 second mind wouldn't you think that <clears throat> I could like mention any word or anything, and you would have some kind of story to reference from your life that you could yes. found on. Yes, I noticed that sitting here next to you. That most everything, no, everything that comes up, you've got. It's entertaining to sit and just listen to you. you well, know? that is that is literally an improv, an improv thing. What you're describing. I mean, it's extemporaneous speaking. I'm sure. I was chicken and afraid to join the debate club at school because I, I didn't understand it. I didn't really get what, why, I didn't know why I might be good at it. And I probably wouldn't at that age in life, you know. But now I, I realize, oh, I get it. I understand. So in debate, you, you either have to argue the pro or the con, and you don't know. So you have to kind of prepare both arguments mm-hmm. and be ready for whatever you get. Or extemporaneously, they give you a word. So in improv, we do that where... You get a single word from the audience, and you make up a monologue about it on the spot. And it, you can either do it one true. I usually do true for my life because I'm old and I've got a lot of references in there, like you said. Uh, or you can just make up a fake one. Um, and this happened to me once when I went to an improv festival in Frederick, Maryland. And it happened to be on my birthday. And my daughter and son had contacted the improv festival organizers and said that their dad's an improviser is going to be in the audience. And they kind of begged and borrowed and cajoled or however they convinced these people. <laughs> so then what the improv was, well, we have a guy here, it's a birthday, so let's bring him down. He supposedly does improv. And then they're going to throw me under the bus. They say, what we're going to do is we're going to get a, a noun and he's going to, he'll just say whatever you think about that noun. <laughs> Six hours later. Yeah. And there's like pineapple <clears throat> or some easy, you know, you, a lot of, yeah. you get a lot of the same stuff in improv, frankly. You get people try too hard and you get platypus and you get ostrich instead of, you know, like yeah. a regular animal. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> or pineapple. It's always the exotic fruits and vegetables. You know, you know uh-huh. acai. So um, I did my little monologue, and then they were going to act it out. But they, they, I passed the test, and they let me be in the scene with them as whatever the, you know, we acted out. And it, so I had a great time. And as I remember, what really surprised them is at the end, um, we were, the, the scene devolved into the good place and the bad place, so basically heaven and hell, right? Mm-hmm. And I want to get out of the bad place and go to the good place. <laughs> mm-hmm. So in the course of the scene, I just start, and it's a big a, a place, like a basement, big church basement of a place that they have a nice big room. And I'm just going to do this bit. I'm gonna, just going to run past. I'm going to break my way out. And I've got eye contact with this big fella on the other team, on the other side of the thing. And I just start running toward him, and I'm looking at him, and I see as I'm running, 
he adjusts his he adjusts his legs, and I run and I jump and I wrap my arms and my legs around him and he catches me and the crowd goes wild and they go end scene and the lights go down. <laughs> well, that's and great. So yeah, it was one of those things where I was completely, because I because I was able to make up a story about whatever word it was that they yes. spit out at me, it led to one of my greatest improv experiences, one of my happiest moments. I love that. I just love that. I love that, you, that we could have a big wheel back here yeah. by the Frank and Friends sign and random words and you would have a life story one time it. i uh, before we wrap i'll say that um i used to have a blog and i would write every night um and one time i guess we were i know i was going to be on vacation so i thought i need some filler that i can write in advance so i put down and i was getting i think it might have been the time when i was going to my 48th 49th and 50th states because i had made it a goal to visit all 50 states so i thought well i know what i'll do is I'll write a paragraph on each of the other states. Mm -hmm. So, and I'll add, really, that was the suggestion, was what it, I'll pick a state and I'll tell the story of what I did in that state. And that was fun. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. You could name a, a place if I've been there or name a state and I've got something. I tell you, you know, something may, may not be that super exciting, but something happened to me in each of those, <laughs> each of those places. That's cool. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. I love I, I, how your mind works. Well, you're, you're the same, though. I mean, you, you have to, when we do radio, it's extemporaneous speaking. You know, we don't know necessarily. We don't, you can't script it all out. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. It's physically impossible to script out a morning radio show because, you know, the look at a late night talk show. Those are scripted out and they have to have a staff of 50 people, each writing 15 seconds worth of material just to fill the monologue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, it's just that's, it's just to fill a 15 a, minute monologue. You've got to have a staff, a huge staff. Yeah. And you burn a lot of material doing yeah. a live radio show, and 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 so and it, that's improv. Is is you just keep going, you just keep filling until you get to you know forty five minutes later, you're still talking. <laughs> I just remembered one of my favorite things that I uh, ever did when I was on the radio, and it's like your uh, discount for the uh, improv festival yeah, yeah. when you have to mention the name Frank and you get twenty five percent off. When I was in San Diego, the zoo on October 1st every year did Founders Day and everybody got in free. Oh, that's everybody. Nice. That's nice. And so each year, that's also my birthday, October 1st. Oh, I got to make a note. So each year we would say for like the week before, look, my birthday is October 1st. The <laughs> zoo has arranged this thing for my birthday. If you just say, happy birthday, Jeff. You get in free at the zoo, which is true, but the guy behind you gets in free too. No matter what he for says. For scowling and walking through. But, <laughs> so all day long, every October 1st at the zoo, people go, Happy birthday, Jeff. <laughs> all right, fine, come on in. That's genius. That is just genius. <laughs> but you know what? You're just spilling time, right? I love it. I love it so much. Because then you've gotten in their heads. I mean, that's that classic marketing book about positioning the battle for the mind, you know, by yeah. Reese and Trout, where the whole thing is if, if when, you, when you have an invisible product, like a radio show or even a podcast for that matter, if you can get a piece of real estate in the listener's mind that something will trigger you, a memory of you, when they're doing something else. Yes, yes, you know? and, 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 and they play along, and, and I mean, everybody oh, had so a good brilliant. laugh about oh, it. that is so brilliant. Some so, things they didn't have a good laugh about. It. Here's one. We, <laughs> we uh, announced that uh, Randy, one of the guys on our show, um, was going to, at 8 in the morning, in the parking lot of the stadium, is going to jump a bus, a school <laughs> bus. He is going to get on to, I don't know what it was. Oh, it was a golf cart. So we said, he is going to get in this golf cart and he's going to jump a bus. And everyone goes to Evil Knievel in their mind. Yeah, yeah. And, and people took the kids out of school, which that was unfortunate because a lot of people came out. Well, you know why? They didn't want their kid to be in the school bus. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was just it, simple it, safety it, precautions. Say, all right, here we go, 8 o'clock. Randy's now going to jump this bus. And he came out with the cart and hooked up the jumper cables. And <laughs> they started the, the bus with the battery. And then he put the cables back in in the right order and drove away. And 
that one people didn't find it funny. They, people were really like people were really mad. Of course they were. But but, it, it but you you delivered on your promise. Well, yeah, you but jumped I, we, the bus. I lost a few friends that day. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> I had also another image of of there being a tiny motorcycle and a, and a, and a ramp, and then him driving the school bus, <laughs> and crushing the motorcycle <laughs> over the little over the. Now little that ramp. would have been a show. I'm just saying, there's a lot yeah. of ways you can jump a bus. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which would be another great title for this episode. There's a there's lot like, of ways yeah. to jump a bus. Well, thank you again for Thanks being for here. Thanks for having I'm us. I'm so delighted to have friends like you guys who can come in and, and uh, entertain us. That's beautiful. It's nice to be in your home again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, if you want to listen to this podcast or any podcast, do like Jeff does and go to audibletrial.com slash show. Get the free 30-day membership and try it out. And then you may want to stick around forever. Listen to things like The Yearling. Yeah, that was my first uh, book when I did the Audible trial. And now I've stayed with it because you will never mow lawn the same way again once you do that. Because it's just, you don't even notice that you're mowing your lawn. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, well, it's just unfortunate for your lawn, but. He's <laughs> 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 got it down to nothing. Like, do you remember that joke? And the guy said, well, I only uh, drink beer when I mow the lawn. And I said, really? Yeah, I mowed it four times yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can only listen to audible books, maybe audio books, perhaps the same way. Love Whatever it, you though. do, podcasts, custom entertainment, 300 years worth of stuff and counting on Audible. So go to audibletrial.com slash show. We also appreciate it when you support us with our merchandise, mm -hmm. like the uh, soft Oh, I love towel. this merch. Look at this. Yes. This, I mean, this is quality merch. Yeah, and that's what um, Avi was here. She's the was on, did home shopping. She was picking at the the threads and seeing that the logo goes all the way down to the bottom. The ink goes all the way down. Uh huh. Uh huh. And uh, and Jody Collins, who designed that logo, he said, uh, I I had forgotten what I'd asked for. He said you wanted kind of a Vegas y feel, but also at home in the Smoky Mountains. So it's kind of a pigeon forge. That's what show. it does. Yeah, yeah. So you get that that mixture. Um, and he's tickled pink to see his artwork on a towel. He thinks that's hilarious. Well, a so, good quality towel. Yeah. So that's uh, good stuff. You get that at frankandfriendsshow.com slash store. And the main drive, the main push, the main way you can help us out is to get us a thousand subscribers by... By uh, Christmas. Ho, ho, what? ho. A great gift that would be. That would be beautiful. So uh, do check us out um, and on YouTube. Tell your friends about it. All you got to do is send them the link, forward them a thing, and say, hey, subscribe to this. Make sure you're logged into your Gmail account because that's how you subscribe to Googly things like YouTubes. Uh, you can also listen on the audio podcast apps, but uh, help us out on the tubes. We made it, um, we, we jumped up about 10 since the last time you were here. Oh. Yeah, we're, well. in, the, we're in the 709, 710 range. I think I have to check. Um, that's the kind of clout we bring with us. That's true. You, you got uh, ten people. That's heavy. You know how long it's take. I mean, that to yeah, me to see it that. It takes a while to build. Yeah, that to me looked like a, a noticeable jump. You know. Thank you. So I I loved it. So uh, thanks a lot for all of those things. Thanks for the support. We appreciate it very very much. Uh, this is the Frank and Friends Show. I'm Frank Murphy. I'm Jeff Detro. And we will gladly talk to you again next time. <laughs>